What's up you guys? My name is Christine and you are watching Call Me Christine. Today we are going to talk about an interesting topic and that is how much does it really cost to live in London? You see, I'm getting loads of questions from my friends, my family, questions on my blog which is www.callmechristine.com about how much do I really need to earn and how much are the real expenses if I am going to live in London. So we are going to talk about four things to just provide you a structure. So first would be rent. Second is transportation, third is groceries, and fourth is going out. So if you're interested, please keep on watching. Now I'm assuming that if you're going into London, you'll probably be renting for the first few years that you're in London. And to straight up answer the question of how much does a rent cost in London that differs in so many ways so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you some tips and notes first and then we're going to crunch some numbers okay so tips or notes about rent is location you see everything is about location in London so I am going to show you a heat map and I'm going to link the source down below as well so London is subdivided into five different zones Zone 1 is the central zone, so you'll have zone 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the zone 5 is the farthest away from the city center. Um, obviously, it depends on where you are working, but my tip would be if ever you can make your home or flat near into from where you're working because that means a lot. We're going to discuss more about that later, but yes search on location second is list your non-negotiables so it ties up with the location so say for example you have your location um, i want to live around this area have a go and list your non-negotiable so one of my examples would be heating guys because you know your girl is from an asian country and i don't really like to go into cold places before but that's for another topic but needless to say adequate heating is one of my non-negotiable you see it's very tricky if you do this during summer but just ask questions now one of the frequently asked questions that i get is where should i begin where shall i start so I'm going to link down some of the um, sites. So if you want to share rooms, for example, uh, we have a site in London that's called www.spareroom.com. So um, yeah, from there you can choose. It's pretty much Airbnb, but for a flat sharing. We also have Right Move and Zoopla. And again, I link the, the, the description or the links on the description box below. Now that you have your location and then you have your non-negotiables ready, you need to ask yourself your rental setup. What I mean by that is you can either choose to do flat sharing, that means you have flatmates, um, or you can rent the entire uh, flat on your own. So again, um, I'm speaking about my personal experience. My first um, rental experience in London is I did flat sharing, um, and, but obviously it depends on your preference. My next note is to uh, visit the flat personally and meet your potential flatmate if you're flat sharing. Um, I believe it's really good because um, I'm not saying that you know you go out or you have to gel together, but I think it's good to share a home with someone that you're comfortable with and um, in London it's very normal to have a letting agent so you have some sort of a middleman um, so you have your landlord you have your agent and you have yourself so some of the flat rental arrangement means that you are negotiating with the agent and not with the landlord but it it depends. I normally uh, search for spareroom.com uh, back in the day that I was sharing flat and in my personal experience, it's really good. 
So now that you have your location, you've listed your non-negotiable, you've met potentially your flatmate, and I suggest that you visit the flat itself because, you know, some pictures is not an accurate representation of reality, if I can say that in a politically correct manner. So sometimes it varies wildly. So what I suggest is you check the appliances, you check the fridge, the heating, how safe is the place, and then you come up with the decision. I suggest that you list your top three shortlisted flats and then when you have those then you sit down and decide what do you like best. Another tip is have your documents ready and if you really like the flat I suggest that you continue and um, tell the agent or the landlord that you are uh, happy to get the flat because the thing in London is um, flats go and sell by so quickly so if you really fancy that specific location and that specific flat then don't waste any time okay let's now talk about numbers so um, it depends on the zone as I've mentioned earlier so if I can share my personal experience um, that was I think 2014 2014 2015 uh, along those days I've been sharing um, a flat with uh, two of my flatmates um, and that's in zone 5 purely because I, my work is near zone 5 so I think it's in zone 4 so um, it probably takes me 15 to 30 minutes door to door to get from my flat to my workplace and uh, that's very important because you know you save time and later on you'll find out when we talk about the transportation cost so my cost there is 650 pounds all in so normally in flat sharing, um, it's all inclusive. So what I mean by that is it's bill inclusive. So you don't have to pay separately for the bill or you have you don't have to pay separately for a council tax because there's a concept in the UK called council tax. The closest representation that I can think of is more of like a real estate tax in the Philippines. But yeah, in a given year, you have to pay the council X amount um, because that's your your obligation as a tenant so if you are going to rent the flat by yourself uh, obviously you need to shoulder the council tax and also the bills like internet electricity water so th those sort of things and so um, right now um, we are not flat sharing and we are living in zone one so uh, pretty much I'm paying um, around about 1,000 pounds but obviously I am sharing my expense with my husband so the roundabout figure is like that but it depends on the uh, flat amenities as well uh, we're living in a newly developed flat and also we have a gym we have an access to the 45th floor so obviously it adds up to the cost but it's very easy to find um, a flat even within zone one, way below than what we're paying right now. Let us talk about um, transportation, right? So um, in London, it's very normal for people to commute and use either buses or tubes or train. So um, because London is quite congested, it's not really advisable for you to have a car, but obviously to each their own. So for example, if you have a baby, probably it's best if you have a car. But um, normally, um, people here, especially within the city center, they move around by tube. So let's talk about that. So we have a card um, before, well, until now, it's called an Oyster card. So it's a card that you need to top up. And you can use that as you, um, you know, as you ride a bus or as you ride a rail, um, railway or trains or underground tube. But now we have contactless as well. So I personally use a contactless card. As I've mentioned before, I'm going to link the video down below. So um, I usually have a separate spending account, right? And my transportation cost is charged against that spending account. So I don't have 
oyster anymore but I think in my first two years in London I do have oyster because it's just convenient so um, yeah so let's go back to our discussion about the rent earlier so as I've mentioned my pro tip for you guys is to live near your workplace not necessarily you know a few steps away but if you can have a 15 to 30 minute um, commute time between your home and the workplace that I think that's optimum because um, transportation costs in London is expensive I think it's one of the most expensive uh, transportation facilities um, across the globe so um, we have a concept of fare cap, so you have a ceiling price, and if you are, I believe it's around seven pounds. So if you've spent seven pounds um, on your going about London, they don't charge you anymore. So that's your ceiling or fare cap for the day. Bus fares are cheaper as well. So before, um, when I was living in Zone Five, and I have a client in Zone One. I've had a challenge. It's it's hard for me to do the morning commute because obviously the, the train is packed and um, it's not really accessible. As you move away from the city center, um, you know, there are train delays, uh, but it's not it's not to say that living in zone five is bad and living in zone one is good. No, that's not my point. My point is you have to assess your situation. If you're working in zone one, probably it's the best for you to check the surrounding area um, within zone one or zone two bracket rather than paying a cheaper rent in zone five. But then you'll uh, probably have more time commuting, which is very exhausting. And also you're spending for your transportation as well. It's very easy to spend 300 to 350 pounds on your um, everyday commute if you're living from away from where you're working or from where you're supposed to be. My personal average in terms of transportation costs is around about 100 pounds to 150 pounds because um, I have everything that I need within my zone. So um, if my my workplace right now is a bus um a couple of bus stops away from where i live uh, but obviously if i need to go on site i'm an uh, implementation consultant by profession so if i need to go to the client site then you know i don't have a choice and it's ever changing but in an everyday basis um yeah it's, it's just very near all that i need is very near where i live so uh yeah i think that's a very good decision plus it's, it frees up our time as well um and you know uh time is something that we can never buy back so they say so there you go so the third topic that we'll be discussing is about food and groceries so as with anywhere else in the world homemade food is uh cheaper way cheaper especially here in london personally i use okado so it's an online grocery service you can you know type in or google search okado.com so what it does is um you just log into their website and then get everything you need and have it delivered um within a, a one hour window so yeah it's very convenient because you don't need to go out and buy your many many products especially me sometimes i buy hazelnut milk buy six bottles and toilet rolls etc so it just makes things convenient um so yeah i've been their customer regular customer for about a year now so ever since i discovered them i never look back um another tip would be um try to do your food or grocery shopping once a week and i'm talking to myself as well because you see the tendency well first one is they have a minimum payment you, you cannot buy one tomato and two potatoes and have it delivered so you have to spend at least 70 british pounds um before you qualify for their delivery so that's number one number two is um 
sometimes I have a tendency, and this is me uh, talking about my personal experience, sometimes it's very easy to overspend when you are doing your grocery shopping two to three times a week. So yeah, I encourage you to um, do your grocery shopping once a week if you can. Let's talk about our grocery numbers. So in a given month, um, give or take, we approximately spend 350 British pounds uh, for our food, um, grocery, and toiletries like tissue rolls, etc. And yeah, again, this is based on the two-person household. Last but not the least, um, the last point that we're going to discuss is going out. So going out means um, eating out in the restaurant or watching a cinema, for example. So, cinema ticket here is around, the average is around 11 pounds, um, 11 British pounds. And again, it wildly fluctuates. So if you're watching an IMAX um, film in Leicester Square, it's very easy for you to spend 25 to 30 pounds per person but if you're watching a 2d cinema or movie then probably it's going to be way cheaper than that restaurant restaurant meal per person is on the average it's around 15 british pounds i'd like to say but again um as with any other things this wildly fluctuates as well so if you're going to have a three course dinner in a Michelin restaurant, it's very easy for you to spend 70 to 80 pounds per person. Um, and that's within uh, central London. Everything is expensive in central London because obviously it's a tourist spot, but um, you just need to know where to go um, and what to look for. So say for example, uh, Borough Market. Borough Market is nice, but in my opinion, the price is, um, the, the price is just inflated as with any other tourist area. But if you want to have a good time, you know, have good time with your friends, catch up with your friends, have a coffee here and there, then yeah, I suggest you allot a specific um, budget per month to have your going out activities. So a pint of beer is five pounds, um, though I think don't drink but yeah it's five pounds according to my sources which I link down below and a cup of coffee uh, this is interesting because by the time that I prepared the visuals for my video I know it's around two pound fifty but now bread and mandre has up their prices hashtag inflation so it's two pounds seventy five pence 2.75 british pounds as of this writing so that's for your information and uh, my tip would be take advantage of free things to do like museums and royal parks so most of the museums like victoria and albert museum uh, british museum they're all free and obviously the royal parks as well um especially during summer uh there it's just be beautiful um don't go there during winter because it's cold but during summer spring summer that's one of our favorite pastimes because it's just be beautiful as always everything that we've touched on here are just approximate so i'd encourage you to do your research ask your friends or if you have some questions feel free to type it down in our comments below and then i'll do my best to answer your question so there you go guys those are my approximate cost slash tips and tricks about living in london about the rent about transportation about groceries and about eating out or going out in general.